enemy two. Let's have it turn around at 130 and 270. Enemy three, let's have it turn around at 90 and 220. Okay. So that just gives a little bit more variety. It gives us a little extra to try to avoid. All right, it's time for round two. This is where we left off last time, okay? Uh, I have my game here and I can collect these items. I call them pickups and my score can increase. And obviously I have a player that I can manipulate. This time around, we are going to add a background image and we are also going to add some enemies. Now these enemies aren't going to hurt us yet, uh, we'll do that in our third video, but I do want some enemies that kind of, you know, move around. Something something that we have to avoid in the game. So, first thing I want to do is a background image. Now, if I want to just do a background color, I could always do app.background equals beige. All right, and there you go. I have a, a color of a background. But sometimes I want a little bit more. And... One way we can have a little bit more is by adding an actual image to the program. Now, this can be a little tricky sometimes uh, because we actually have to go out of the program, download an image that we want to use, and then re-upload it into the program itself. But I'll show you all the steps to do that. So, I already have a Google search for this, but if you Google search background image for a top-down game, you'll get a whole bunch of real nice ones, okay? So all of these are really excellent. Uh, the one that I'm going to use, oh, I kind of like this one. But no, I don't want to use that one. The one that I'm going to use is this because it's kind of almost like a blank canvas and it, I don't know, it makes me happy. You know what? It makes me happy and that's why I'm going to use it. If you use the one that makes you happy. So... I have my image here. It is um, at 590.421. Let's see if I can open this in a new tab. There we go. Oh, it has a watermark on it. You know what? Who cares? I'll take the watermark. It doesn't really matter to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it and I'm going to save the image. Now, unfortunately, not every image that you come across you'll be able to use. Okay. This one is a JPEG. Excellent. Good. You can use that all day long. Sometimes you'll find ones that are WebM's, W-E-B-M, and we cannot use them. You can always, you know, Google search a way to convert them. Go ahead. Have fun. But uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that. Uh, I'm just going to find one that's a JPEG, which happens to be this one. And so now I have saved it. It has saved to my downloads folder. Make sure you know where it is being saved to. So I come back into my game, which is actually... This one? Where is it? This one. Sorry, I have a whole bunch of stuff open right now. So I come back into my game, and now I need to upload it. So I'm going to go to my three lines here. I'm going to come down here to upload image or sound. I'm going to select the file. This file is the one that I downloaded. I probably could have named it a little bit better instead of EEA 83 DBB DEF for whatever. But... It is what it is. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to hit upload. And now I have this set up in CS Academy itself. And in fact, anybody can use it. So if you are really patient and you want to type in, <clears throat> type in this entire URL, go right ahead. Go ahead and do it. Me, I'm going to hit this to copy it to the clipboard. Okay. So now it's copied to the clipboard. I'm going to go back into the sandbox and open up my game. So, what I want to do first is I want to use something called app.url. App.url. And then after that, I'm going to hit equals, and then in quotes, I'm going to paste in my 
URL, my uh, background image. So if I hit run, still nothing happens. Uh, I still have to call app.url into the game, but so far so good. I'm going to come down here, open up line 7, and what I'm going to do is image equals image with a capital I, then in parentheses app.url. Now technically I could have just done image equals image in parentheses and then pasted this in, but it just makes it look cleaner. I, I like when things look cleaner than, uh, than you know, just throwing in an entire link here. So app.url, now I want it to start at zero comma zero. All right, so you kind of treat it as if it is a rectangle. You put the starting location of the top left corner, but you don't need to put in, at least not yet, uh, the width or the height because the image itself already has a width and a height. So if I hit run, that's what I got, okay? But I'm actually missing a little bit on the edge and I might actually be missing a little bit down below too. So I can change that if I want by going like this. Image.width equals 400. Image.height also equals 400. And if I do that, there we go. Now I have the whole thing. Now it is crunched a little bit and it is a little bit uh, skewed, but that's good enough for me right now. So if I hit run, Oh no, all my stuff is gone. I can't find it. That's because I put this image below player pickup and score. So this is actually being written over top of this. And obviously we don't want that. So I'm actually going to cut this out, open up line three here, and paste it in. Now all my stuff is back. Okay. Sweet. All right, now I need something to avoid. I need an enemy. So if I'm going to make an enemy, I'm going to call it enemy. And actually, I want to put this, yeah, put it right here. I'll do a hashtag enemy or enemies. I'm going to call my first one enemy one. And I'm just going to make these basic rectangles that go back and forth, up and down. Uh, I don't want to do too much. Uh, obviously, you can make it more complex if you really want. But I'm going to do rectangle. Uh, it's going to start at 200, 200. So that's technically where my pickup starts, but trust me, it, it'll work out in the end. So 200, 200. Um, I want it to be actually a square, so let's do 25, 25. And a fill of red and a border of, once again, black. Well, let's not do a fill of red because my pickup's red. Let's do, let's do purple, okay? So there it is, sweet, excellent. Um, now, I want this to move, and unfortunately, it's not as easy as just doing uh, enemy one dot center x plus equals five, because that's just gonna keep going and going. I want it to kind of bounce back and forth. So what I need to do is I need to use something called dx, so, enemy one dot d x that is the speed in which it is moving it doesn't say where it's moving which direction it's moving it's just going to give the speed and this speed let's make it uh let's also make it five all right because so it's going to be the same speed as our player now i want it to move but I don't want it to be the one that moves it. I want it to move on its own. This is where we finally come in with on step. So I'm going to define on step, open and close parentheses, nothing inside it. And I am going to do, where is this at? Uh, enemy one dot center X, because I'm going to have it going back and forth, is going to equal enemy one dot dx. So technically it is enemy one dot center x equals five, but since we do enemy one dot dx, we can actually flip that around a lot easier than if we use just a standard number. So enemy one dot center x now equals enemy one dot dx. If I run it, it just kind of sits there. Uh, what did I do? Oh, cause it needs to be a plus equals. Way to go, dude. All right, now it just, 
goes away. Bye. We want it so it stops here and moves back. It stops here and moves back. I want it to go back and forth. Okay? This is how you do that. If, I'm going to put two parentheses here, enemy one is ever less than 100 over here, or enemy one is ever more than 300, so if ever kind of hits this area right here, then I want enemy1.dx to flip, okay? So enemy1.dx equals negative enemy1.dx. So if it's going to the right and it ever gets more than 300, I want it to flip, so now it would move to the left. And then as it goes to the left, if it ever becomes less than 100, I want it to flip again, so it goes back to the right. It should bounce back and forth, which it doesn't. What did I do here? Um, what did I do here? Oh, <laughs> duh. I need to put center X. My fault. There we go. Now it's bouncing back and forth. Now I have something to avoid. Okay, but if I run into it, nothing happens. We'll change that later. Let me just do one last thing. Let me add in a couple extra enemies, two more. So all I'm going to do is copy and paste. All right, these two are going to be enemy two. These two are going to be enemy three. And once again, my favorite friend, copy and paste. Come on. All right, so now I have three of these things going on. This guy needs to be over. This guy needs to be over. Uh, this section here, all enemy ones need to be enemy twos. This section here, all enemy ones need to be enemy threes. So, come on. Two, 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 and two, and then down here, three. Now, an easy, easier way to do it is to just double click. Once it's three, hit copy, double click, paste, 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 and paste. You'll find these little uh, uh, shortcuts as you go. Now, I don't want these enemy two and enemy three to go back and forth. I want it to go up and down. So that's messing with the center Y. So everything on enemy two, I want to make center Y. Everything on enemy three, I want to make center Y. Now, there's one more thing I want to um, amend, and that's up here in my uh, enemies portion. I want them to start at different X factors. So enemy two, I want it to start at X equals 100. Enemy three, I want it to start at X equals 300. So that should give us one enemy going back and forth right here, one enemy going up and down right here, and another enemy going up and down right here. There we go. Now, if you want to go crazy here, you can change these numbers a little bit, all right? If you want things to go faster, Let's make enemy two go eight, and let's make enemy three go 12. Okay, so that gives a little bit of variety. Also, we can change um, their uh, turnaround points. So enemy two, let's have it turn around at 130 and 270. Enemy three, let's have it turn around at 90 and 220. Okay. So that just gives a little bit more variety. It gives us a little extra to try to avoid. So that's gonna be it for this video here. What we did was we added a background by going onto Google and finding a background and uploading it. And then we added enemies that can move. Uh, they don't do anything to us yet, but that will be video number three. So thank you very much. Once again, take your time. Make sure you have all this in. It is starting to get uh, decently substantial. In our final video, we will make sure that these enemies can actually hurt us. And then we'll add some sound as well. 
So thank you very much.